Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and this is the Artoria Mini Freak. So as you may have guessed by the look of this thing, and I guess the name of this thing, you've probably guessed that this is the grown-up expanded version of the Micro Freak. And it takes um, the stuff in the Micro Freak and gives us more of that stuff, expands the feature set, and gives us brand new things to play with as well. There is a lot to talk about with the Mini Freak, so this will not be the final video about it on this channel. Indeed, there's so many interesting corners of the synth that I've been discovering that I want to make a bunch of videos. It's certainly a synth that has got me excited to talk about it. But in this video in particular, um, what we're going to aim to do is start off with a sort of a uh, quick fire FAQ round to introduce the, the, the main features of the synth. And then we're going to make some patches, th two, three patches. Uh, and in making those patches, I'll try and touch on most of the f areas of the synth to give you a decent overview of uh, the sounds and the workflow uh, that it's capable of. Before we dive in, in the interest of transparency, um, Arturo did send me the Mini Freak for free to make some videos on, uh, but they haven't asked for any editorial oversight, nor will they be getting any editorial oversight on any of the videos that I make. I haven't otherwise been paid to make the videos. Um, the other thing is that um, at the time of making this video, Arturia haven't been able to send me a manual for it. Um, so I have had to kind of learn it hands on, but given my familiarity with the Micro Freak and other Arturia products, uh, it certainly hasn't been uh, that difficult um, to, to get going with it. Uh, and I guess exploring it has been a nice way to learn it, even though my preferred method is to read the manual cover to cover first. Uh, that's my secret method. Uh, the other thing to point out is that, as far as I can tell, the firmware that's on this unit is a beta firmware. Uh, there is one bug that I've encountered uh, to do with the um, effects unit. Spoiler alert, there are effects. Uh, but otherwise, it seems pretty stable. Um, but yeah, just uh, heads up, if something looks weird, it may well be because it's the uh, beta firmware. But um, who knows at this stage? So let's talk features. Uh, so the Mini Freak. Uh, the first thing uh, that has been expanded is that uh, whereas the Micro Freak had one digital oscillator, we now have two digital oscillators. Uh, this digital oscillator uh, setup is basically the same as on the Micro Freak. You have various different modes for different kinds of oscillators. Everything that was on the Micro Freak is present on this version of the firmware except for the vocoder, um, sadly. Hello, Oscillator Sync from the future here. I was just doing my due diligence during the edit and I realized that uh, the current firmware is also missing both of the wavetable oscillator types. So that's both the one that's derived from Platts and also the user wavetable, um, which is a shame. Hopefully they'll be coming in a firmware update, but they are currently missing in the firmware uh, on the version I've got anyway. Uh, also, weirdly, the chords oscillator type is only available on oscillator 2 for some reason. Don't know whether that's a bug or intentional, but uh, just for uh, completeness sake, I wanted to make sure I let you know. Back to the synth. Uh, I would love to see the vocoder come back. Um, hopefully that's something that they intend to uh, add back in. Uh, on top of that, something that is new to the Mini Freak is that Oscillator 2, as well as being able to just act like a, a, an extra oscillator, is also, on some of the algorithms, able to process the input coming from Oscillator 1 in various different ways. So there's like a, a distortion mode, an AM and FM mode, there's a phaser, there's a um, comb filter, which is really, really cool as well, big fan of a comb filter which can expand what you are doing um, in terms of your oscillator per voice. Um, like the Micro Freak, although the oscillators are um, digital, the filter and the VCA are analog. And then after the VCA and uh, VCF, we now also have a set of digital effects engines. There are three. They work in stereo. And uh, the effects are freely assignable between the three slots uh, with the caveat that in this firmware there's a bug where you have to select everything in certain slots for them to appear in all of the slots. It's a bit weird. 
I just work around it at the moment. Hopefully that is a bug that will be fixed um, going forwards. I guess the big thing here, um, we have eight voice polyphony. And this is um, fully articulated polyphony. So unlike uh, on the Micro Freak where there was only one filter, and although you could play four notes, they all went through one monophonic filter. Um, this is a um, fully articulated um, polyphonic setup. So you have a VCF and VCA per voice, which is obviously um, really good news. However, you can set the behavior back to being monophonic or paraphonic if that's what you need for your patch. And I really like the flexibility of being able to go back to a paraphonic articulation. That's um, a really big deal uh, for certain types of patches. Uh, on top of all of that, we also have an audio in, and there is an audio in oscillator type uh, if you want to route the audio uh, externally coming in to the Mini Freak. So that's all the things that make the sounds. Let's talk about the things that can wobble those sounds about. So in terms of modulation sources, what do we have? Well, we have an ADSR envelope. Uh, that's a full ADSR, um, unlike on the uh, Micro Freak, where you had the shared decay and release, we now have separate decay and release. And you have two different curve types for the ADSR. You have a standard ADSR and uh, what's referred to as a percussion um, uh, mode, which you can select in one of the menus to get something a bit sort of snappier. I would presume that makes the envelope shape um, more exponential. That's generally what that will mean. We have the cycling envelope from the um, Micro Freak as well. So that's the uh, uh, A, tack, H, hold, D, uh, decay envelope. And that can be set to be an envelope or that can be set to uh, be cycling and that can be uh, synced with a key press or be free running. Um, you can also now reorder the order of the um, the different sections. So you can do A, D, H, and, and, and other things as well. Um, so uh, very, very flexible. Um, yeah, uh, and a great addition. So you can use it as a secondary envelope or you can use it as an extra LFO, but you probably won't need to use it for a um, extra LFO on the Mini Freak because unlike on the Micro Freak where we only had one LFO, we now have two um, completely independent LFOs. We have variable shapes. They can be tempo synced. And there's this, and I can't really explain it without showing to you, and we'll do it in one of the patches later on. We have an LFO shape sequencer where you can create custom looping LFO shapes um, with uh, different ramps, multiple ramps, multiple uh shapes within there it's really really interesting um uh i will get to that in one of the uh the patches so it's difficult to explain without showing you so those are our um, modulation sources the mod sources are per voice so they are polyphonically articulated but you can set them uh, independently to be triggered monophonically so if you want uh, an lfo which is doing like a pitch wobble across all played notes uh, like like a, an organ would you can set one of the lfos to, up to do that you can also have the lfos be triggered by other lfos or reset by other lfos to create other more complex relationships between them lots of really interesting stuff you can do from a sound design perspective uh, in there and uh, on top of that, we also have um, two macro controls. So the pitch and um, pitch wheel and the mod wheel can be turned into macro modes where each of those can control um, four parameters each. So you can essentially set up different uh, states within your patches and have them performable as well. If you have the macros enabled, you can't have the, the bend and mod wheel enabled. So it's kind of an either or there. Um, but again, that's a really, really nice addition. And although it's not written on the sheet here, of course, we have the mod matrix up at the top here, which gives you access to all of those various different uh, mod sources. It has some preset places that you can send them. And then you have um, nine assignable uh, destinations. So you have three in three banks basically and you can switch between those different banks so nine assignable destinations plus the preset ones up at the top there and in the thing about it in the macros there are also some other ones that you can assign that aren't on knobs basically any knob that you can turn here can be a mod destination so you can have envelopes 
um, modulating the shape of other envelopes and stuff like that. Um, really, really flexible in that way. So in terms of actually playing the thing, okay, let's let's address the elephant in the room. I couldn't even bring myself to write it on the sheet here. We have a traditional keyboard and not the capacitive keyboard that we had on the Micro Freak. I recognize that I'm probably in the minority here, but I miss the capacitive keyboard. I thought it was a really, really interesting way to interact with the uh, the instrument. I would have loved to have seen that be uh, uh, expanded upon or, or made even more weird. Give me an isomorphic keyboard with capacitive touch sensitivity. But I do recognize that for most people, um, this is a net win. Uh, so velocity and aftertouch, uh, as you would probably expect. And it's, I think, the same keyboard as you have on the key step models. So it's mini keys. But in terms of mini key um, keybeds, the Artorio ones are, to my mind, the best ones that I've played. So that doesn't bother me too much. And mini keys have really bothered me. But if you don't like mini keys, then it has mini keys. Live with it. It's probably worth it. So beyond actually being able to play the keyboard, what do we have? Uh, we have an arpeggiator with lots of different modes. So all of these buttons here give you different directions, different um, octave ranges, different modifiers for the arpeggiator. We'll play with that a little bit uh, later on. We also have a polyphonic step sequencer. It's very similar to what you have on the Keystep Pro. It's 64 steps. Each step can have six notes, and each of the notes on each step have their own independent velocity and length. So it's really quite flexible in that way. And on top of that, uh, we have four mod lanes for doing um, parameter sequencing and you can sequence those either live by turning a knob while you're recording into a sequencer or you can uh, step sequence it uh, parameter lock uh, if you uh, like that term um, per step as well so you can be very precise or you can just be very expressive uh, we also have slice and dice on the arpeggiator and the step sequencer the same way that we had uh, on the Micro Freak, and what that does essentially is introduce, um, as you turn up this control when you're in this mode, uh, it will uh, introduce more variations into the um, sequence. So a little bit of the way up, you'll start getting octave jumps and maybe um, changes in gate lengths uh, and so on. And if you go right to the top, you'll be getting much more radical uh, modulations and uh, modulations, modifications, that's what I mean, uh, like ratchets and the like. Uh, so really, really expressive way to play with your sequences and modify them on the fly without having to um, literally modify, the, modify them and turning uh, notes on and off, etc. So finally, before we get to making some patches, let's talk about connections. Um, uh, so around the back, uh, what do we have? We have headphone out, we have left and right out because this is a stereo device. We have the audio in, as I have mentioned. Uh, we also have an analog clock in and out and a sequencer reset output. Uh, that's a really nice little extra that they've added there, which gives you a bunch of flexibility when you are working with other types of sequencers, which might not be so conventional. I can see a bunch of uh, useful things you can do with that um, in the modular world for resetting stuff, getting stuff back into sync uh, within a uh, bar structure. Uh, we have sustain pedal in. Um, which I have not got plugged in, and I don't think I even own a sustain pedal, but I know that will be uh, good news to a number of people. We have USB, which is, um, I believe, only MIDI and connection, connections to other software. Um, but um, don't quote me on that, because as I say, I don't have a manual. Um, we also have MIDI in, out, and bless you, Arturia, through... <laughs> Uh, makes life so much easier when you're trying to uh, put together a hardware setup to have through on as many devices as possible. So that's fantastic to see. And again, bless you, Artoria. It's on full size five pin DIN. I try not to be a snob about the mini jack MIDI, but I have more five pin DIN cables than I have stereo mini jacks, I guess. And finally, uh, I guess this is on the connection side of things, um, there is going to be a um, virtual instrument that goes alongside the Mini Freak, which mirrors its functionality called uh, Mini Freak V2. 
V, I think. And uh, although that's not going to be available at the release, from what I've heard, um, that is coming soon and the patches should be compatible between the two. Right. I think that's everything we need to talk about in terms of the features. Everything else, hopefully, we will encounter when we make some patches. So let's make some patches. Right, so it is synth law that when you get a new polysynth, the first patch that you need to create is some kind of spacey pad sound. So let's do that with our first patch. So we've got a initialized patch here, which is just the basic waveforms set up. Uh, let's start by just giving ourselves a paddy kind of envelope over here. Uh, so we'll give it a bit more of a tack. Something like that. That decay is a little bit sudden. Probably get quieter by a little bit on our sustain. And then of course we need a nice luxurious release. Maybe a little too luxurious. Somewhere around there. Okay. Um, so uh, let's choose our oscillators next. So we have two oscillators to choose from. At the moment, we're just hearing the one of them because on the initialized patch, oscillator two is turned down. So we're just hearing uh, oscillator one on the basic waves mode. Um, let's try something more interesting. Let's maybe go with, oh yeah, maybe the harmonic. Uh, although it sounds like a dull organ at the moment, we have all of these. things going on in there, which could sound really nice when we start modulating them. Cool, yeah, that's going to be a fun place to start, I think. Let's uh, add in some second oscillator here, maybe go something more basic. So we need to turn up first. So immediately, here's one of the big advantages with the Mini Freak over the Micro Freak. We can now layer up these different digital oscillator sounds. Um, okay, uh, let's choose something. Um, could go with FM. Oh, how about uh, over towards the end, we have the, uh, the noise engineering ones. We've got the Sorex one, which is a... a Saw oscillator, but it has all this nice crispy texture we can get from the noise phase mod. The different shaping of the saw, and on the wave, we get kind of like a pseudo sync sound, which will be really nice to mix in as well, I think. So let's start by detuning these two oscillators to get some of that richness going on. Um, so by default, when we turn the tune knob, it's going to do it by um, uh, a semitone, but we can click it to go into fine mode and we can just offset it a little bit there. Uh, incidentally, if you hold down shift and turn it, we get octaves instead. Uh, so all nice and easy to tune it in various different ways. Uh, let's go over to the first one and just tune it down a bit. So we get some of that richness. Cool. Uh, let's maybe darken that a little bit with our filter. So it's in low pass mode at the moment, which is probably what we want. We maybe want to have the envelope move it a bit. Bit of resonance. 
Do you get a bit of bass cut with the resonance, but not too much? Resonance is nice though. And we probably also want to um, uh, have the velocity affect that amount as well. So we can come in over here, hold shift and turn this up. Now, hopefully if I play quietly, we should get a duller sound. And harder, we should get a brighter sound. Yeah, nice. Uh, of course, uh, we don't have to have the ADSR envelope affecting the analog filter. We can have any of our other modulators uh, affecting it instead. We can just assign things in the mod matrix. Speaking of the mod matrix, let's assign some things in the mod matrix. Um, I think it would be really cool to have that kind of um, sync sound happening at the start of our sound, perhaps this, so it kind of goes. Something like that. Um, so we can assign that in the uh, mod matrix. Um, that's a different shape to our main envelope, so we can use our cycling envelope as an auxiliary envelope instead. So we want to create a shape, which is that, so an instant onset, and then a long fall. We don't need a hold section here. Um, so just like that. And then we can come over to our mod matrix. So we have these predefined destinations, the pitch, wave one, timbre one, cutoff. Um, and if we want to send something else, so this is oscillator two, so wave two essentially, uh, we can assign it in our mod matrix. And remember we have nine assignable slots, not just three, we can page through them like that. Um, so uh, let's set up a sign one to be um, cycling envelope affecting uh, the wave here. So hold down here, wiggle it. Let's assign it to wave two. Find cycling envelope going to assign one here and turn it up some amount. Let's try somewhere around 70. Um, I think we probably want that affected by velocity as well, because I kind of don't want all of that happening when I when I played lightly. Um, so the way that we do this um, in the mod matrix is we're essentially going to assign one of the other assigned slots to control the amount of this assigned slot. Don't worry. <laughs> all will become clear. Uh, so what I will do is I'll turn down the amount back to zero. So we had about 70-ish, we'll just remember that. Um, so back down to zero. And what I'm going to say is I want assign two to control the amount of assign one, and then I'll control assign two using the velocity. Easy peasy. Uh, so uh, the way you do that uh, is you come back into selection mode, you hold down the button here and then you scroll to the thing you want it to control which is that one there and when we check that should be cycle envelope to assign one so assign two is now controlling that dot on the mod matrix uh, so if we uh, move our selection now to velocity to assign two and turn this up to 70 something and if i play lightly we should get not very much of that sync sound. Basically nothing at all. If I play hard. Superb. Immediately we get some nice expression here. Let's get some other wobble going in here. Um, what about the... Yeah, what about the timbre control here, the shape? Let's get an LFO going on that. Uh, so assign three can be doing that one. And then we can maybe send LFO one to assign three. Boop. And turn it up. Uh, it's bipolar, so we'll set this in the middle somewhere. And set this fairly high. 
if that's way too fast, turn it down. A nice thing is you get these lights here which show you what's going on with the LFO. Uh, let's maybe turn that over to a triangle as well. Yeah, yeah, it's getting somewhere. Right, what next? Okay, I know. Uh, let's do something with the... Um, what's it, this one? The content control on the harmonic envelope. But I think this would sound quite nice if this was pinging. It's quite sort of glassy. So maybe let's make use of, yes, let us let me show you the um, LFO uh, designer thing, because this is bonkers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, assign uh, the wave control, which is just here already on the mod matrix, to uh, LFO2. Uh, so at the moment it's just going to sound like an LFO spinning it, right? Great. Uh, so what we can do... Um, on LFO2, make sure we've got it selected. Uh, if we go to the wave shape and go to the wave shaper, you can see here it's a straight line on the screen. Might not be able to see the screen super clearly. This is maybe one of the things they might have upgraded <laughs> compared to the microfreak has made the screen a little bit bigger, but uh, that is what it is. So this control isn't currently moving anymore. So what we can do is shift and LFO select, which puts us into LFO edit mode. Now what we now have is a sequencer of, uh, a 16 step sequencer, which allows us to sequence the shape of this LFO. Um, we can make it shorter by holding down last step and choosing other amounts. And then on each of these steps, we're able to put either a ramp up, a ramp down, a um, uh, a, a triangle, so both a ramp up and a ramp down, or a another shape which can either be a hard step or or a number of different shapes in between on each of these steps within the LFO. So it's kind of like a shape sequencer. It's a bit like what you have on the Mini Brute 2S, um, kind of a cut down version of that, cut down but also more controllable in some ways. Let's just hold down a note and see what we can do. So I will um, hold that note there, okay. So if I touch one of these steps here, I can put a little dink in it like that. And we should hear, there we go. Let's speed it up a little bit. So you can hear that we've got this little friend happening here on that step. So we can put another one on another step. So at the moment that's the same uh, the same movement, right? But we can turn it down here. Right? Uh, we can also change the shape of it in terms of whether it's more flat at the top or more sort of exponential. Uh, so you can see here that what we can do is create these rhythmic multi multi shaped LFOs. And I'd say we can change what shape we're drawing here by selecting a different shape here. So we can create these rhythmic ideas within our patches 
uh, all within the uh, LFO. We can also have, like, as I say, just straight up steps. So if I wanted to put like a. And these ones affect the na the neighbouring ones as well. Which is really cool. So loads of really interesting things we can do with rhythms within our LFOs. It's kind of like an extra sequencer which works independently of the main sequencer. Super cool. we'll have that one controlled by our slow LFO one as well uh, there cool okay uh, we could also maybe have the filter ping a tiny bit uh, with these ones as well. Let's uh, do that. So LFO2 to, to the filter cutoff, uh, LFO2 to, to filter cutoff, there we go. Let's also maybe turn down the octave of one of these oscillators as well. Uh, maybe oscillator two can go down an octave. Okay, I think this is a great time to add some uh, effects. So our effects up here, we have three of them. Uh, they can be set to different things um, to turn them on and off. We tap the type here, so there's some chorus. Uh, within each of the effects, we also have different subtypes. Just um, hold that for us. So in our chorus, we have a default one. We have a lush version, a dark version, a shaded version, a single version. And then we have three uh, effects on each of them. And what those effects do depend on which effect we're on of course now I wonder whether or not just a tiny bit of distortion on this patch might be fun not that much just give it a little bit of grit We've got wet dry control for our distortion as well and a filter yeah a bit of grit on there. Let's add some delay. And on the delays here we have various different types including stereo, ping pong, synced and unsynced. So there's a ping pong one synced here. We can change the division here. Dotted eight sounds good to me though. And we've got a send level here. Um, the reverb and delay in the menu here can be set to be either a send effect or a wet dry mix, which is really, really nice to have that option as well because it's going to depend on the type of um, the type of uh, patch that you're making. It's giving us some nice stereo width there. Let's add some reverb. 
Again, we have multiple subtypes in here. So we've got default one, long, hall, echoes, room, dark room. Let's try, uh, let's just try long, shall we? Of course, these controls for the effects are also able to be modulated in the mod matrix. Now, there are other things we could do with this patch, of course, um, like uh, having our sequenced um, uh, LFO amount be controlled by the mod wheel, I think would be a really useful thing to do. Um, but as a sort of starting patch for a uh, spacey friend here. I think this is a... Uh... a nice place to start. So we just had some voice still in there, so we hit our polyphonic um, uh, maximum there, because we've got quite a long release, obviously. Uh, in the sound edit uh, menu here, if we come out of uh, here, so it's also holding. Uh, in here, in the voice menu, we do have a poly steel mode, and we can set this to be various different things here. So uh, we have oldest, lowest velocity, uh, or none, which means you can't steal past the, multi the maximum amount, so you don't get new notes. Um, so we had oldest there, but we could have maybe had lowest velocity and have that low note be nice and low. Anyway, um, yeah, so there's lots of stuff we can do uh, in, uh, in there as well. Um, so that's our first patch. Um, right, let's do something weirder. For this patch, I want to experiment a little bit with the uh, oscillator one going into oscillator two um, setup. So um, at the moment, initialize patch, uh, let's come on to oscillator two and turn it up. And if we go past all of the normal modes da, 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 saw harmonic yes so now we get to the modes where the output of oscillator one is going into oscillator two uh, depending on which one you're working with that's either going to be in parallel so you'll hear oscillator one and what oscillator two is doing to it or it will require you to turn up the volume of um oscillator one for you to hear it so uh, the first one hit is we have an FM AM, so we can have uh, this one be frequency modulated and ring modulated. And we can choose the wave shape here. So obviously the frequency relationship between the two uh, oscillators is going to be important here. But you can use this to potentially set up a more um, interesting uh, two-op um, synth than you can do with just the one oscillator. Uh, the next one we have here is a multi-filter. So this is a, uh, a straight-up fully functioned um, digital filter that you can use per voice before it goes into the main filter. So for example, if you wanted to... Um, so we've got cut off resonant and then a bunch of different high pass low pass um 
bandpass and notch filters here. So if you wanted to like notch filter something to get a different general timbre from it. Before it went into the analog filter, you could do that, or you could do like big resonant band passes um, to get um, those sorts of sounds as well. And that's all possible in there. Uh, you then have the surgeon filter, which is like uh, more of an EQ type filter. I think it still has a little bit of resonance, uh, but instead of a resonance control, what you have is this uh, spread control in certain modes, which basically moves the high pass and low pass in the notch and the band pass apart. So less characterful, less resonance than the multi-filter, but still useful on some of the more um, complex sounding oscillators on uh, oscillator one. Uh, we've got a comb filter. Which is the one I want to use. Uh, if we lengthen the release here, get all those sort of super short delay, reverby, echoey, springy sounds, pseudo kind of carpal of strong stuff going on in there. Um, we'll come back to that one because that's the one I think I want to use. Uh, we also have a phaser filter which gives you that all pass, resonant all pass, up to 12 poles. The feedback gives you resonance there as well. Moving the cutoff rapidly with a sample and hold will also give you these awesome sort of resonant clicks and stuff. You kind of hear when you change the poles. So some cool stuff that can be found there. And then we have Destroy, which is a um, wave folder. A dirty sounding wave folder. A decimator. And a bit crusher. But the nice thing here is that this is going to be per uh, voice rather than bringing all of your sounds together and then going through the decimator effect on the digital effects, which is a very different vibe. It allows you to get these crunchy textures, which you can then filter. This actually gives you a whole new life to the, um, the first oscillator. Loads of different sounds. Could find in there just a huge amount of timbre variation that you can get from that destroy oscillator um yeah that's that's really cool uh, but the one i want to use as i mentioned is the comb filter and all these sp springy resonances And what I thought won't be, uh, might be cool to go into that is the Carplus Strongs, which is also kind of a springy, stringy kind of sound. And we can probably use the two to bring lots of different resonances together, which we can then do stuff to in the effects. Uh, so that's my plan. So let's grab the Carplus Strong here. There we go. So I've lost a bit of volume here. Uh, just turn the master up a little bit. So we've got these really clangy feedback tones. I think are really cool. We can do some stuff with that for sure. Uh, so we've got this damping control on the comb filter, which obviously takes a lot of the top end out of. I think we should probably control that um, with velocity. 
Uh, so we want it to be dark if I'm playing lightly, and then as I hit harder, I want it to turn it down so it be a negative amount on the mod matrix. So let's assign that there. Shape on assign one. We'll come down to velocity after touch on assign one, and we'll go negative. If we play lightly, it should be dark. If we play harder, Darken it a little bit just with the filter. So the way that the velocity after touch works on the Mini Freak, by the way, is that um, depending on how you have it set up in the menu for your particular patch, you can either be velocity, after touch, or both. But the after touch can't modulate um, below what the initial velocity was. So if I play um, lightly and get that sort of dark sound, and then apply some after touch. I can come up and back down, right? But if I come in um, hard initially, so it's brighter to begin with, I don't really get anything to play with with the aftertouch. So the aftertouch can't kind of reset where the velocity initially set things. So that's just the way it works. Um, I can't really think of a way that would be sensible otherwise, except for maybe to have a, a, an option to have aftertouch unlatch the velocity. That might be something that they could do. Anyway, that's just the way that that uh, particular bit works. Um, let's add some effects. So there's immediately a big part of me that thinks that this kind of sound would sound good if we distorted it. But I think we should add some reverb first before the distortion, because the distortion works in stereo, so we can add some reverb to give it some stereo width. And then... Um, have the distortion distort that reverb and then get all that sort of movement in the outer parts of our sound, which can be really, really cool. So that means we want reverb on FX1 probably, and this is where the bug that I've encountered comes in, because if we look at the moment, reverb isn't in there, uh, and it might not even be in two either, it's only in three, yeah, there. Um, I think now I've selected it, it should turn up again. In here, no. See, this, this is hopefully going to be fixed before the release. There'll be a cut now while I fix this. Okay, uh, it, I've got reverb to appear here now. There it is. Um, so we'll turn uh, that on. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's add some distortion on FX2. Uh, oh, it was already on distortion. Okay, so let's turn that on. Yes, good. Uh, probably not that much is needed. Uh, also, there is a nice different variations, obviously. Uh, there's one here called Tape, which I really like. Got a wet dry control there.
cool. And then maybe add like, like what? Uh, maybe like another dis uh, another another reverb. Can we do that? Does the reverb disappear because I'm using it somewhere else? Perhaps that's what happens here. Um, yeah, let's put a delay uh, on instead so we have a nice echo in here. Um, let's choose something in stereo. And maybe the filtered, filtered ping pong. distortion just by touch I think maybe let's have that cut off affected by uh, velocity as well uh, so velocity goes to cut off a little bit because I like being able to swell that up Let's have resonance on a slow LFO. Uh, so let's assign resonance to there and we'll get a nice slow LFO on LFO1. Uh, so LFO1 goes to assign two and we'll have some resonance coming in and out, making it scream occasionally. And of course, uh, the the aftertouch here is polyphonic, so it's only affecting the, the filter and damping on that particular note, which is fantastic. What else can we do here? Um, I liked it when this was moving. Uh, whoops. So first thing first, I'd like to have that as a controllable parameter on the mod wheel. So let's do that. So let's set it as low as we want it. About there. So let's then put wheel goes to, uh, I haven't got this on the mod matrix yet. So it's sign three there. And then mount, we can turn that up. And now I have that as a performable. And there's little movements, but it kind of stabilizes. Just 
tiny little movements on the mod wheel, mod strip. sound <laughs> oh man yeah I could I could play with this what a lovely Expressive, weird synthesizer. Cool. Okay, I reckon one more patch. Let's do something a little bit more conventional, but let's take a look at the arpeggiator and the sequencer to get a feel for those. Okay, let's start by mocking up a quick uh, bass sound. So, back on the initialized patch, let's just get a bit of a snappy envelope. Uh, something. like that. Uh, let's choose some oscillator types. Let's not go with the um, the basic waves. Let's maybe go with, uh, let's go with a wave shape maybe. Yes, go with something like that and we can have that modulated by the envelope probably so uh what have we got here we've got the amount which is the timbre on one and we'll have that modulated by our envelope there turn that up cool have the velocity effect our envelope amount the resonance and maybe on oscillator 2 we'll just have something a little bit more sort of straightforward. Uh, maybe we'll use the um, analog, virtual analog one, and go an octave down. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, anyway, it's more about the uh, the rest of what's going on here. Oh, one thing I will uh, just note here over on the envelope at the moment, we're in poly mode, but we can really easily go into mono mode here. Uh, or indeed uh, unison here as well. Which boots the uh, level quite a lot. Or maybe just stick with mono or poly at the moment. Um, Cool. Uh, so, uh, arpeggiator and sequencer. So to turn on the arpeggiator or the sequencer, we just need to switch our modes here. And if we um, maybe just turn on the hold mode here, so I just need to press, I uh, don't need to hold down the keys. So maybe if we do something like uh, this. Okay, so we've got an arpeggiator going there. Uh, so we have our various playback modes here, so we can go up, down, up and down, random, 
order is this the order that I played them in? Holly, um, we can't hear it at the moment because we're in mono mode, but we'll play everything as a chord. Uh, we have Walk, which uh, does a... Um, uh, it uh, flips a coin to see whether it's going to go up or down or stay where it is at that particular time. We have Pattern here as well. don't have the manual so I don't know how to change the patterns uh, but I understand there are probably different patterns here uh, yeah um, but I don't know quite how that works because as I say I don't have the manual that's the one thing I haven't managed to work out uh, so beyond the patterns we also have octaves three octaves four octaves and then we have these modifiers here. Uh, so we've got repeat, which plays everything twice. So, and these are momentary, you have to hold these ones down. Ratchet. Which you can hear a bit better with the cut up up. Random octave, which means that the notes aren't going to go in uh, sequence anymore. This one, you turn on, it's not momentary. And mutate uh, actually changes the order altogether. And it's different each time. So we've gone quite a long way from where we originally were now. So now our root note has changed. So that's a really nice way to take your arpeggios and turn them into something else. The other thing that we have here is um, if we turn this on here, we have control over the gate lengths and also the uh, spice control here, which is changing velocity, it's changing gate lengths. And if we want to get a new variation of that, we hold shift and tap the same button up here. And the higher we go up here, the more weird uh, changes we get. So we've got gaps in here now. Yeah, really different now. So the difference between the uh, spice here and the mutate is that the mutate um, is going to change things. permanently, whereas this spice we can bring in and out. So uh, if you used the, um, this, the arpeggiator on the Micro Freak, this is um, kind of an extended version of that. The spice obviously we had on there, but we didn't have these uh, different modifiers here, but uh, the sort of directions and stuff we did already have on the uh, arpeggiator. So uh, the sequencer, um, we can enable that by going uh, and touching that button there and uh it's a 64 bit a 64 bit 64 step sequencer uh by default it's going to use 16 steps but we can change uh the last step by holding down this button going to one of these other page mounts um and then choosing where within those pages our last step is but let's just stick with a 16 step just for the moment um so uh ways that we can deal with the sequencer so the first thing we can do is we can do um step recording so Uh, let's see how that sounds. Uh, come. Okay, so we've got a sequence in there. Uh, if I want to, I can uh, just do that. Uh, 
so by default if I turn on uh, the record here I'm going to overwrite what is in there so right um, but we can also overdub we won't really be able to hear this if we're in poly mode uh, but if uh, I switch to overdub um, I can add stuff into the steps that are already there so shift and it goes blue now rather than replacing the step that's in there this will actually just add stuff over the top and then we can have up to six notes per step hear that the gate lengths for those notes that I've played in are not the whole gate length of the step so they are completely in independent in terms of velocity and gate length. Uh, we can then also apply uh, spice and gate length mod modifications to the sequence as it's playing. Let's give that some uh, swing. end there will actually start skipping steps as well we also disable steps uh, and then we have also got the ability to um, sequence um, knob movements as well so we can come in here into our mods here hit record and if we wanted to put a filter sweep in here let's try it and these are done as offsets to the current position so if I want to darken the whole thing I still can If I wanted to affect particular um, steps in here, I can also do that. Uh, so if I uh, click into that particular mod lane and choose a step, I can then affect that step. And of course, I can build up my sequences entirely using uh, just those um, uh, sort of step sequencing by touching the steps as well. In here, in the options, in the sequence here, we can also turn off smoothing. So before it was sort of slewing between the different steps. Stepping between them instead. Which will depend on what the, you're looking for in the upper sequence, I guess. One other thing I thought I would just show on this patch, which I haven't shown yet, is the macros. So these are um, separate to the mod matrix, a way for you to control up to four parameters just on uh, these two sliders, uh, four per slider that is, and those can be in either direction. Um, so let's, uh, let's put an effect on here, and we'll use these to affect the effect and a couple of other things at once, perhaps. So let's go with uh, a bit crusher on the output here. Because we get that really cool talking sound there as we turn up the decimator. Uh, let's... Uh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, cool. So uh, to set up the uh, macros, what you do is you shift and you touch um, macros here. Uh, choose which one you're looking at, one of these two. And then what I would usually do is set this uh, to full and tweak the knob at its maximum uh, amount. Yeah. Uh, and then if I turn this down, that's going to turn that down. So we're not actually affecting the actual parameter. We're just setting up the macro. So we might also want uh, to give it more resonance when we do that, because that gets even more sort of talky. Like that. So we can control those two parameters on this uh, single slide here. What else might we do? Might give it some uh, attack on the yop yop yop. So yeah, we can use that slider now to affect up to four knobs all at once um, in different directions if we wanted to. These are all going up as it happens, but they don't have to. And then we can set up a separate set on here. So uh, perhaps um, um, if we had like a different effect on here, if we just come off here just for a second, um, perhaps we have a delay on here. We'll go for one of the tempo synced one. So we could use this as a send control for that. So we could come into the macro assign here, choose this macro slider. And because this is a send effect, uh, the way it's set up at the moment, we could just throw a little thing in there to that kind of dub trick. I want to go faster if you want to do that. Oops, I want to assign that. Uh, feedback. And maybe on FX3 we can have a reverb and do the same thing. Sign here on this one. And we can have that as our send effect single knob or slider for the um, <laughs> for the reverb and delay. I guess the other thing we could do with this slider, actually, just while I'm thinking about it, is that at the moment we've got the bit crusher on wet, dry, 100% the whole time, so that's will. Yeah, okay. Anyway, yeah, so uh, the sequencer is surprisingly powerful. The macros make for great performance controls. Um, yeah. And there's still so many things that I want to talk about, but um, I think I'm going to leave it there for this video. <laughs> So 
So there's a lot more I want to talk about with the Mini Freak, and I will do uh, in upcoming videos. I can't possibly comprehensively cover this synth in a single video, I don't think. There are so many little corners that I keep discovering as I've been playing with it, where I'm just like, oh, that's really, really useful, that's really, really cool. I can see creative ways to use that. And I think that um, is a real testament to the folks that designed it. Like, this is a good synth, as far as I'm concerned. This is my kind of synth. Um, and, uh, yeah, as a result, there will be a bunch of videos on the Mini Freak coming up on my channel, because it is... A synth that I'm excited to talk about, and I haven't really been this excited to go really in depth with a synth um, since the Op6. And the Op6 is one of my favourite synths of all time. So that's pretty high praise for me. I don't know whether this is going to be a synth that is for everyone. Um, it can do really big classic sounds, um, but it really likes to be made to do weird stuff, interesting stuff, a misuse of its features um, to do interesting things. Um, and that's hopefully what I will show off. Um, this patch, incidentally, these, these little clinks and clanks, that's a uh, sample and hold phaser on the output of the uh, effects, which gives it this lovely ringing over times and every time it switches it gets that clink. So little things like that, I mean, just lovely. Um, it's definitely a synth that is designed to be appealing to people like me, <laughs> sound designers like me, people that like synths that can be pushed and pulled into interesting ways. I will of course turn it into a drum machine at some point, but the really interesting thing about this synth is that there are three or four different ways I can think of doing that even now, uh, even only having it for um, less than a week at this point. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, that I was able to give you a flavour for the kind of things that the Mini Freak can do. Um, if you did enjoy it, then as always, a thumbs up on the video is much appreciated and drop a comment down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Mini Freak. As I say, there will be more Mini Freak on my channel for certain. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care. Bye-bye.